This wave kind of goes hard. I expected Wave 2 to be an outlier in terms of quality, but Wave 3 is surprisingly even better. The track selection this time, while not as stacked as the last wave, has a lot of sleeper hits. All three tour tracks are beautiful, GBA Boo Lake and 3DS Rainbow Road are gorgeous, and DS Peach Gardens and Wee Maple Treeway are nice bouts of nostalgia. Oh yeah, 3DS Rock Rock Mountain uh, also showed up to the party. Who invited him? Okay, let's address the elephant in the room. All eight tracks are in Mario Kart Tour, but with the exception of him, none of them really make it obvious. Anyway, like the last two times, we're gonna give these tracks a shakedown and see how they differ from their original appearance. And again, huge thanks to these channels for footage of the Mario Kart Tour tracks. I still can't figure out a way to play tour tracks from the past, but before we get into it, if you like what you see, make sure you click that fun little subscribe button. It's quick, easy, and free, and helps me make more videos like the one you're currently watching. The first track in the Rock Cup is Tour London Loop. Immediately we're off to a bit of a rocky start because this track acknowledges British people, but because it's so good I can turn the other cheek this time. Like with the other city tracks from Mario Kart Tour, London Loop's three laps all follow unique layouts, using red arrows to direct racers, a style of track I've grown quite fond of. The first lap follows the layout of London Loop 1, the second lap follows the layout of London Loop 2, And the third lap follows, well, actually it continues to follow the layout of London Loop 2 for the first half, and then the layout of London Loop 3 are for the second half. I do have to say, when I first played this track, I got confused on where to go a couple times. I'm not sure if these lap layouts are genuinely more difficult to follow than the other Tour City tracks, or if I'm just dumb, but I wanted to point it out regardless. Beyond looking just generally nicer, the London Eye actually moves, and the Queen's Corgis begin roaming on the third lap. They really let themselves go after her death. And again, this course style works quite well for these Tour City tracks, as all three Nitro variants are represented here. I also just find this track's layout to be particularly silly, having the London Eye, Tower Bridge, Buckingham Palace, British Museum and Big Ben all be on top of each other makes me think of that bit from Phineas and Ferb. Either I've grown a lot in the last year or England's gotten smaller. But yeah, a solid reimagining that follows the expected formula of the Mario Kart Tour city tracks. GBA Boo Lake was unironically the track I looked forward to the most from this wave. I've said it before, but the SNES and GBA tracks stand the most to gain from being reimagined. GBA Ribbon Road and Cheese Land are among my favorite retro tracks just because of the artistic liberties taken. They fill in the blanks that the Nitro tracks left in really interesting ways. The most obvious change made here is that Boo Lake is actually a lake. The Nitro track does not look like one in the slightest. You're telling me these are the tree's reflections? Get real. This little jump where the track splits was removed, as was this bewildering pointless bridge. The second half of the track is now an underwater zero gravity section, which is pretty neat. The spooky mansion is still spooky, and the old castle is downright ominous now. And yes, this track was also in Mario Kart Tour, but when I first played it, I really thought it was built from the ground up. It wasn't until I went to the Super Mario Wiki, God bless, that I had my heart broken. I do think this looks nice enough to ignore the fact that we got another track ripped right out of Mario Kart Tour. The dynamic lighting and water effects make it look pretty good, and the texture of the pier makes everything look damp and waterlogged. I will concede that there's no reason for this track to have a zero gravity section though. It wasn't in the tour version, obviously, and was clearly added on to make it look like more was done to the track. Also, there's definitely some joke to be made about the name Boo Lake. I spent like half an hour brainstorming but couldn't formulate a coherent punchline. So here's my notes on the matter. Boob Lake? Maybe like Michael Boo Lake? Like Michael Buble, you know, like my favorite singer is Michael Boo Lake. I don't know. Maybe it's like a, a boo singer or something. Or like Boo Lakers instead of bootlickers. Or you could enunciate it like Boo Lakers to make it sound more like bootleggers. Um, yeah. Anyway, great track, better than the original. All right, 3DS Rock Rock Mountain. I'm just gonna say it, this track is the worst of this wave. It looks like straight Garbo. Genuinely, I think the Nitro track looks better. Its textures are more realistic and shaded nicer, and lower resolution hides any ugliness that may exist. When you take the retro track's monochromatic textures and combine them with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's dynamic lighting, you get something that looks really cheap and bad. You could slap a Little Tykes logo on this track. So what's different here? Well, this little ramp at the start has been removed, and the wooden ramp in the grass has been placed on the track. These two dash panels have been removed, and this ascent has turned into a zero-gravity section, complete with a few spin-boost pillars that replace the center dash panels. In fact, it's identical to the version seen in Mario Kart Tour, with the exception of that last bit. And again, the zero-gravity part was likely added just to make it seem like more was done to the track. Anyway, boo, this one sucks, hate it. Thank God Nintendo used another Wii track for this wave, so I have an 
easy clickbaity thumbnail. Wii Maple Tree Way is a reimagining from one of my favorite tracks from one of my favorite Mario Kart games from probably the best Grand Prix Cup in the series. Daisy Circuit, Koopa Cape, Maple Tree Way, and Grumble Volcano. Maybe it's my nostalgia flaring up, but what a stacked cup that was. So, the version this Nitro track reimagines is actually the Maple Tree Way from Mario Kart Tour, which, yeah, is kind of lame, but it looks 10 times better. When compared to the Nitro track, you'll notice the part after the cannon, which is now a glide section, is wider and less of a hollow. This little hut is no more. The dash panels before the half pipe aren't as wide. This bridge now has a railing. The rope bridge is replaced with a glide section, and these two dash panel ramps aren't as wide. Quite a few differences, but the coolest part is that this track reintroduces half pipes, after being absent in both Mario Kart 7 and 8. Of course, they were reintroduced in Mario Kart Tour, but I'm glad they still made a comeback here. And as much as I like this track, I wish it would have gone with the version seen in Mario Kart Wii and 7. But at the same time, I'm glad it looks better than the Tour version. This is definitely my nostalgia talking, but I still like the Nitro track. The Rock Cup is pretty good, with the glaring outlier being 3 3DS Rock Rock Mountain, but the other three are rock solid. Up first in the Moon Cup is Tor Berlin Byways, another city track. And to be expected at this point, each lap has a different layout. Now, where this track gets crazy is the order the variants are used. The first lap follows the layout of Berlin Byways 2. Then on the second lap, there's this weird dead space between the finished lines of Berlin Byways 2 and 3 before just strictly following the layout of the ladder. However, at this intersection, the retro track turns left and the nitro track turns right. Then there's a second dead space between Berlin Byways 3 and 1, where the track just follows the layout of the ladder. What makes this track really cool, on top of the similarly improved graphics that London Loop has, is how the cars work. Now, driving alongside traffic is nothing new. We've seen it for over 25 years. But typically, a track's layout follows the traffic's flow. However, because the lap layouts are different, you're constantly weaving in and out of traffic, which creates a really cool dynamic. The only other time we've seen this is in Mushroom City from Double Dash. The red arrows are here, but I'm not a baby about them anymore. Although there are two little parts where red arrows aren't there to stop you, and instead Lakitu will just pick you up and correct you. I think their absence is a little odd, but this is also the completely wrong direction, so who really cares? Among the various other German landmarks that I can't identify, not only are there epic elephant statues, but the Berlin Wall. Like, literally the Berlin Wall. And there are womps in it? This raises so many questions. Because by depicting the Berlin Wall, this game directly acknowledges the Soviet Union and the Cold War. Granted, the Soviets have already been depicted in Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, but we've never seen such a historical display before. And by depicting the Berlin Wall, by extension we can assume the fall of Berlin, and therefore the Second World War happened as well. Meaning there were historical figures like Franklin D. Boosevelt, Adolf Todler, Winston Chomphill, Benito Yoshilini, Joseph Shilin, and Emperor Kupahito. And if the Berlin Wall fell, then John F. Kennick Cheap Cheap must have given the Ich bin ein Berliner speech, and Ronald Raven gave the tear down this wall speech. Of course, if Ronald Raven were president, there would have been a crack cocaine epidemic in the Mushroom Kingdom, the democratically elected government of Goom Nada would have been overthrown, and weapons would have been illegally sewed to Mr. Iran to fund the Contaquax and Ninjiagua. What makes the inclusion of the Berlin Wall so crazy is that it is a direct artifact of the Cold War. When I see Berlin, I don't automatically think of the Cold War in the same way that when I see Paris, I don't immediately think of the Battle of France and Vichy France. But when I see the Berlin Wall in a Mario game, obviously my ill brain fills in the gaps. It's like how the Battle of Wake Island, and therefore Pearl Harbor, happened in the Cars universe. Okay, psycho bit over. Berlin Byways is a really good track. I like it a lot. DS Peach Gardens is another track I have fond memories of from Mario Kart Wii, and it's another track that I was kind of surprised to learn was also in Mario Kart Tour. Immediately at the start, you can't drive all the way around this island, which makes sense. There's no reason you need to drive there. What doesn't make sense, however, is that the Chang Chomp bouncing around comes so close to killing these Yoshis and Toads. Are there not any better spots for you guys to spectate? And the Mario Hedge sculpture looks much nicer. These two flower beds are less in the way, which is a bit of a letdown, as as they make for pretty thrilling obstacles. Avoiding them as a kid took all of my brain power. The smiley face hedges have been replaced with a gigantic piranha plant, and the large hedge section now has sculptures of Peach, Luigi, Toad, and Toadette. Kinda weird you'd pick uh, Toadette over Daisy, but um, what do I know? 
The two jumps at the end have been removed, and the two Monty Moles now patrol the gardens. Patrol meaning they just go back and forth, but you know what I mean. Then the last lap has you going backwards, implementing the route from DS Peach Gardens R. It even features an original segment to transition to the reverse part, like in Sydney Sprint. The only remarkable bit is this glide section which allows you to fly through the hedge sculptures, reaffirming my incorrect belief that hedges are all leaves, no branches. Okay, yes, this track is ripped right out of tour, but it looks nicer and that's all I really ask for. And the Shang Chomps in the tour track only rolled. These jump and chomp, so at least something was altered here. Also, this Toad and Shy Guy eating from a tea set that's too big is adorable. This one's really good, but I like the one I played when I was 10 more. That one's just the one I played when I was 6, but better. Tor Merry Mountain is a fitting track for the holiday season. I love how the houses have warp pipes for chimneys, and the entire village gives me Polar Express vibes. The only difference is this jump was turned into a glide section. I don't really have much to say about this one. As with the other direct ports of the Tor tracks, I'm content with this one just because it looks nicer than the original. If you don't look at the skybox, this one could pass as a Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Nitro track. And I do love the Santa train sleigh. Definitely not repurposed from N64 Rainbow Road, by the way. That throws coins at you. Because it fulfills Sally's wish of Santa to just send money. Yeah, this one slaps. There, I said it. <laughs> Now we get to 3DS Rainbow Road. I'll be honest, this was the one I dreaded the most. As much as I loved Mario Kart 7 when it came out, I think it's aged the worst in the series. Because it's just Mario Kart 8, but not as good. Every other Mario Kart game has some unique flair that warrants a revisit, but 7 was always the most so-so to me. And even playing the track in its heyday when I was 11, I thought Mario Kart Wii and Mario Kart Double Dash had better Rainbow Roads. Boy, was I wrong. This is definitely the best track from Wave 3. The first difference you'll probably notice is how the track material changed. The Nitro track had your standard vibrant rainbow aesthetic we saw for over a decade. Here, the track looks like it's in motion, as if we're riding gamma rays or a solar wind or something. Its translucence gives it an otherworldly feel, like it's through the power of some space wizard that we can even use the track in the first place. And I just want to take a big old bite out of it, because it looks like it would have the texture of a fruit by the foot and would taste incredible. Also, just the general space effects look cooler. The pitch black sky, illuminated by a million stars, has been replaced with nebula both orange and purple, and brilliant galaxies light years away, looking like those tumbler leggings of yesteryear. Instead of the dead, bleak world juxtaposed by the Technicolor road in the original, we have a whimsical journey through outer space, our prismatic road all but bleeding into the radiant cosmos of the background. The boring moons and asteroids that plague the original have been replaced with fun, planety looking planets. This part after the first glide section has been flattened out a bit, and the moon's more detailed texture, combined with the floatier physics caused by zero gravity, makes for a more realistic moonwalk. And I would know, I've been there. Of course, like with a few other tracks in the DOC, Lakitu freaks out if you go the wrong way on the moon. And yeah, yeah, this track was also ripped out of Mario Kart Tour, but the Fruit by the Foot Road and more realistic moonwalk make this much better than the original. Love this one. Wave 3 is the best one so far. The track selection, while not as stacked as the last wave, makes up for it by having them all, save one, be incredible. London Loop and Berlin Byways, along with Sydney Sprint and New York Minute, will likely go down as some of the best tracks in the series' history. Merry Mountain is another great reimagining of a tour track, and much more successful than Ninja Hideaway. Peach Gardens and Maple Treeway are good bouts of Wii era nostalgia, and Rock Rock Mountain and Rainbow Road are nice representations from Mario Kart 7. And of course we have another deep cut from Super Circuit. I'm happy with how all these tracks turned out, with the obvious exception of Rock Rock Mountain. Maybe Nintendo made a purposefully bad track so that the other seven would shine even brighter. If they did, it certainly worked. And even though the five non-tour tracks were also in tour, graphically they look so much better, and that alone excuses the blatant copy and paste. Because to me, it shows that Nintendo at least took the time to make sure they played and looked nice on the Switch. The only other disappointment I had was with Maple Treeway, but I'm just a baby man and never would have been satisfied with it, so who cares. At least Maple Treeway looks nicer than the other two Wii tracks from the DLC. But London Loop, Boo Lake, Maple Treeway, Berlin Byways, Merry Mountain, and Rainbow Road look gorgeous, and I couldn't be happier that Nintendo decided to make Wave 3 even better. With only three waves left, I want to talk about what tracks I personally would like to see remade. The first is Wario Stadium from Mario Kart 64. This is the only track from that game that hasn't been remade, and I always thought the motocross aesthetic was a fun variation on these standard circuits, and inspired the more X Games focused tracks like DS Wario Stadium and GCN Waluigi Stadium. Rainbow Road from Super Circuit is memorable for Bowser's Castle from Paper Mario being in the background and a lot of the track having jumps off either side of it. Mushroom City from Double Dash was always my favorite track in that game. Its seedy yet chic nighttime aesthetic makes me think of some old film noir, or maybe like on the waterfront. I love the shortcut through the alleyway and driving under this claustrophobic overpass. Wario Coliseum
Coliseum from Double Dash was another one of my favorites from that game. It was the Mario Kart version of Nickelodeon Guts for me, and the course was so long there were only two laps. This would go crazy with zero gravity. Bowser's Castle from DS is one of my favorite iterations in the series because of how it feels like an obstacle course. Each room features some new threat to avoid, and the spinning cylinder and moving platforms at the end are seared into my memory. Rainbow Road from Wii might be the best Rainbow Road in the series, and I would just love to see it remade. All the twists, turns, and jumps, burning up in orbit, doing these sick half-pipe tricks, it's all so good. Last, I think Woohoo Loop and Maka Woohoo are two of the most memorable tracks from 7. They're so out of place, being the first tracks in the series to take place in another game setting, Wii Sports Resort, which set the stage for Excite Bike Arena, Mute City, Animal Crossing, Hyrule Circuit, and Big Blue. These are also the first tracks to use lap segments in lieu of regular laps. Now, I don't think any of these will be included in the DLC, but I can still dream. None of them have ever been remade, and as much as I love Peach Gardens, Calamari Desert, and Coconut Mall, I want to see some new tracks be reimagined. But what do you think? What tracks do you want to see? Leave it down in the comments below. Anyway, Wave 3 was really good. Rock Rock Mountain sucks, but everything else is great, and it gives me hope that Wave 4 will be even better. Take care. Thank you.